What's up, friends? It's Haley, aka Bird. And Randy. And you're tuning in to the Give Them the Bird podcast. This podcast is all about challenging what it means to be healthy and fit. It's about celebrating sustainable behavior change and non-scale victories. And most importantly, it's about giving the bird to the diet industry and societal expectations of body size. Why? Well, because at the end of the day, you have an entire life to live that does not require your body look a certain way. Thanks for tuning in. Now, let's give them the bird. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Give Them the Bird. You've got just Randy and Haley here today, and um, we're just going to do a little catch-up episode, kind of checking in with each other, how things have been going, what's new in life, um, and hopefully share a kind of like some highs that we've been experiencing, like some GTB moments, and maybe if there's any kind of struggles. I know that girl, I have been struggling lately. So this is just an <laughs> event session for me, but yeah, any any maybe struggles that we've been experiencing. Cause I find that like, I always think like, oh, I don't, we don't need to talk about how we're doing. And then whenever we do, people are like, oh, that makes me feel so much better to know that like you guys struggle too. So mm-hmm. um, Big what's, time. yeah, what's new Randy, how's life? Oh man, I kind of feel like I've been struggling a little bit too. Um, I mean, obviously there's days that are better than others and such, but um, I think just, I've been seeing some pictures of me lately, which I'm, you know, I'm not usually the one in front of the camera. So <laughs> that's that true. Has been different and it's made me feel some sort of way about my body, you know? Um, so that's been a little bit of a challenge, but, um, I think one, one thing I, I saw on probably social media at some point this past week was just about how your body, and we've talked about this, this is not new information, but it's a good reminder, you know, with time and with age, your body changes. And that's the goal is to get the privilege of aging and the Mm. privilege of your body changing, and so that definitely puts it back in perspective for me too. So, um, so yeah, I'm just still working on coming to, to terms with how my body looks right now. And I think that'll be a constant struggle, but totally. it's getting better. Yeah. Pictures are, can be so freaking hard. I was even looking at now that you mentioned that last night or when was it yeah I think it was like last night I was trying to find all of my like bump updates and save Mm -hmm. them into like an album which I realized I only have like 10 and I'm approaching 30 weeks pregnant so it's like (laughs) we have not been very consistent on that front but that's okay (laughs) and it was like even going back and this is kind of related to just like how it's been a rough week but going back to when I was like oh my gosh, my bump's so big and I'm 14 or 16 weeks pregnant. And then I'm like, oh my God, I was a little tiny nugget, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Pictures, even, even when we, like you said, the expectation is for us to grow and change as humans, especially when we're growing a human, it can still be, pictures are just, they, they take us back. And I think for some people, it's funny because this actually came up in a, a conversation I had with a student recently It was really cool because she said, um, now when I see pictures of myself when I was smaller, I don't feel any resentment. Like I don't Mm -hmm. resent her and I don't resent the me now. Oh, Yeah, this was like really powerful. I was like, girl, you should be coaching me right now. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) she said, what I see though is like, I don't see myself. I see myself more now when I see pictures of me, like this is the real me. I was like, damn, that's really powerful. How did, how, how'd you get there? Like, how do we, how do we get to that place? Like that's really Share with me your secrets. I know. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, picks are hard. They are. are. And I mean, they don't always, they don't always, they're not always true either. You know, I mean, we can make people look better in pictures and you can look worse in pictures than you, Mm -hmm. you know, feel like we maybe truly do. So, you know, keeping that in mind too, but I would say one of the, maybe more positive things about my experience with like these two particular pictures and thinking about my mind, you know, I just put on what I wanted to wear and I just did it, Mm -hmm. you know, like I didn't in the moment I was like, I'm not going to not wear it or, you know, I'm not going to not wear this because I'm afraid how I look. I'm just, this is what I want to wear and I'm going to wear it. And (laughs) you know, the pictures, but in the moment I 
felt comfortable and I just did it. So, and in the past, I wouldn't have even worn those things. Mm. So it's definitely progress, even though I feel like I still have some work to do, you know? Right. So that's a huge win. I feel like, like the fact that, yeah, I put on what I wanted to wear and it was comfortable for me. I felt good in it. Maybe after the fact, it was like, oh my God, I probably should, like, you know, that thought that I always say this yeah. it's not bad, but like I should have looked in the mirror or yeah. like, I, you know, whatever. But that, right. I think it's a huge win. And that was also something that came up in GTB Academy. I know we talked about that, like uh, mm-hmm. an example um, last week with Erica, but that was something that came up was like putting on our clothes and deciding how we feel in them first and then potentially looking in the mirror or just skip that motherfucking mirror too. Like what you right. did, Randy. Like, right. I think that's a huge yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It felt good. Talk about like just doing stuff that makes you feel like putting, putting the way you feel first before the way you look. I just think that's really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good feeling for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to ask you how you've been feeling now that you're in like third trimester. Cause last time, I don't know when this will air, I guess, but last time we talked about pregnancy and like body image, you were in like first trimester. So. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's so funny. Cause even when that episode came out, I think that episode dropped when I was in I don't know, late into first trimester, or I probably, no, I was second trimester, because I think I was maybe like 12 weeks when we recorded that. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl, we have had some changes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And there, I've I've actually been enjoying it. Like, it's been, it's made me realize I'm so grateful for how much time and energy I've put into improving my relationship with my body, because I, like, I don't think... I don't know how I would have done this, you know, three to five years ago. Like that's just, and maybe it would have forced me into body, some more like body respect and acceptance, but that shit would have been rough. Um, Yeah, really up until this week, I've been feeling really good. It's like fun to see my my big belly grow and I think my belly button's about to pop. I don't know. We'll see. (laughs) But I, I had a... In a, a doctor's appointment on Monday, and it was my glucose test. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh my gosh, so fun! Oh my god! And honestly, I will say, I did not think that the drink was that bad. Like, I never really did either. I didn't I didn't hate it. But. I thought it was gonna be like, like the consistency of like maple syrup or like cough syrup, uh-huh. and just like. I was like, oh, this just tastes like I left a Sprite out overnight and I'm drinking it in the morning. Like, yep, yep. <laughs> it yep, is bad, exactly. you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I had the the glucose screening and leading up to it, I was really nervous. And I think there's just this thought in my head and something that I, I want to dive into with my therapist of like, it's still really ingrained that if my blood work is elevated, it's my fault and there's a lot of shame associated with it, like a shit ton of yep. shame. And yep. it was elevated. <laughs> so I have to go yeah. back for that dreaded three or four hour one next Monday, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But when I found out it was elevated, I mean, like I started crying and normally I can keep my yeah. shit together, but I like had a full day of like appointments and stuff at work and I like closed my door, turned off my light and like stood in the corner and just like, I didn't let myself ball because I wore mascara that day, but yeah, yeah, you know, that would have been bad, (laughs) but I just, I, and I was like sitting there naming what I was feeling and just kind of letting me talk shit about myself. And I just realized I felt so much freaking shame for having elevated glucose, which, and then, you know, I was reading my browser history off to my sister yesterday because I was like, I think I'm spiraling. <laughs> yeah. And it was like literally 20 or 30 different searches of like glucose and pregnancy and like yep. all this stuff. And then I, you know, narrowed it down to, well, it's because I've gained this much weight and because I was this weight before. And it's like, no, it just like yep. our episode with Danielle, like it has mm-hmm. nothing to do. I mean, sure, lifestyle habits do come into play, but like. I, it's, it's not me. It's just my body not being able to keep up, you know? Um, and so I think that was, that's kind of like the 
after the fact GTB moment of I've, I mean, I still feel like icky. And of course I came into work on Tuesday then, and my boss had dropped off the Girl Scout cookies I ordered. <laughs> I was like, like it's L -O -L. <laughs> um, and so then it was, you know, I was texting Tyler and I was like, no, like, I can't have any sugar this week, like no sugar. And, you know, it's just been like diabetes, diabetes, diabetes yeah. in, in my head. Um, and then I was like, you know, again, Google searching, which I do, I do not recommend. <laughs> I need to take your computer away. I know. And my phone <laughs> and just my brain. I need and a lobotomy. <laughs> I need a lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but then I realized I'm like, you know what? No, it's not my fault. And I haven't like completely worked through it, but it's, this is not my fault. Like I'm, everything's going to be okay. Um, and it's like a lot of people fail the first or, you know, don't pass, fail, whatever the first round of it. Um, and I don't want to try to manipulate my eating a shit ton this week in hopes that it'll change that result. Because if I do have gestational diabetes, like I want it to show up and I want to address it. Right. You know? Exactly. So yeah. that's where but my spiral in mind has been. I think those are totally, I mean, it's totally normal to be like nervous or anxious about that because it does change the last third of your pregnancy, you know? Right. So, and especially if you're already coming into pregnancy with, you know, some concerns about body issues and things and it, you know, having trouble enjoying it to its fullest, maybe already then adding another layer, like, of course, that's a little scary. Right. But mm -hmm. on the flip side, you know, it's easily managed easily in terms, you know, relative to other things. Right. right. Um, and so, you know, I think it's one of those gray areas we talk about a lot, like it's okay to feel that like anxiousness or nervousness about the unknown or the potential for a change, but just like anything else, it'll become kind of the normal and, right. you know, you'll do what you have to do to take care of babe. Yes. So. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm already, cause I'll be, I'll be 20. Am I 29? I think I'm already 28 weeks. I'll be 29 weeks this weekend. So it's like, okay, we'll have 10 weeks of making it through. And I think there was like a lot of this, this pride and being like a low risk pregnancy too, sure. realizing. Yeah. And I'm like, if it is elevated, which it was just slightly elevated, but still, um, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be high risk. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, there's just, there's a lot of shame. And again, I know it's like rooted in fat phobia and everything. And, um, so yeah, trying to find, like you said, that gray area of like, recognizing it <laughs> and mm -hmm. allowing myself to feel um and try not to act on it that's the big thing we talk about like our yeah. thoughts you know not acting on our thoughts so you you caught me on a good day thank you for talking me through that randy oh good <laughs> <laughs> and by a good day i mean like a bad day that's great for this conversation you yes know, so. yes yeah yeah well i'll be anxious to see too like what your therapist take on it is too but um, but yeah, I always, I have to remind myself a lot that it's normal to feel the things, mm -hmm. you know, um, like one of our, you know, GTB, um, Academy participants had just posted in our little Facebook group we have this weekend about feeling a certain way, um, and being nervous about, you know, what was to come. And that was, you know, we all kind of chimed in with kind of that same thing. Like, it's totally okay to think and feel those things. It's how you choose to maneuver through that and what actions you choose that mm -hmm. make the biggest difference. Yeah. I was thinking about that too. And, oh my God, I got like the warm and fuzzies when I saw that, that group was like chatting again. Cause we haven't, <laughs> we, I haven't dropped oh. in there in so freaking long. Um, but yeah, I, I know I was, I was so impressed seeing what like the other participants responded and, Again, I think it just comes back to this feeling of like other people are there too. And that I think a lot of times when we have whatever it might be, like, you know, we see the picture of ourselves, or we get the, the higher test result or, um, you know, a court, like re regarding the, the person that posted in the group, like her situation, it's like, we feel so isolated and alone when it happens. And mm -hmm. so it reminds me again, like, I love having the space to talk and 
you know, our Facebook group to talk. And it just reminds me like other people are dealing with this stuff every single day too. And that's not to minimize how each of us are feeling, but I think it's just this collective, like, ugh. like yeah. there are so many of us that feel icky and, and it's okay. And, and I think that's, I love that just how normalized or how much we normalize it. Um, because I think that there's kind of this, um, I don't know, kind of this narrative and like non-diet culture and like intuitive eating spaces of just like kind of push it away or like not necessarily push it away, but just love yourself and like yeah. remind yourself you're a bad bitch and you can do all this shit. And I'm, I'm like, hell yeah. Like hype girl one right, one. Right. Got it. It's all society's fault. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also like feel that shit, recognize that it's okay to feel it. And, yeah. and I think that's how we like, we work through it too. And that was one thing that I responded, you know, in the group was this, I think these points where like we dip or where, I don't know, some people might say like we take a step back or whatever it is. Like I think about with you and the, the like the picture situation, you know, it's like, or with me right now, it just provides, I think, a point of reflection, you know, it's like it causes a disruption to our flow. And again, this can be said for anything, even outside of body image, like it causes this disruption to our flow. And when that happens, instead of looking at it as like a, a setback or a failure, it's like, okay, this is an opportunity to pause and reflect. And mm -hmm. for me, I know personally, it's like, okay, I'm going to dive into the shit that I got going. Like, I spiraled so fast. I was like, I told my sister Jessica, I'm like, I think I have a little, I think my problem's back. <laughs> like, I think, yeah. I think I'm having some issues, you know, or, um, yeah. So I think like it's, it just provides a really great opportunity to pause and like check in with ourselves. And, and that's, that's really important. So mm -hmm. feel, not even failing forward. It's like just learning, you know, it's just yeah. learning. I like that. I mean, I think I forget that too, to like look at all of this as an opportunity to think about it. Cause even lately I've found myself like, I, well, first of all, I made the mistake of stepping on the scale, which Brandy. I know, it's I know okay. but the same thing happened when we were in GTV Academy. I was, I think what was happening was I was feeling like pretty okay with my body. And so I was like, I must have lost weight for me to feel this good about my body. It must be that I've lost weight. And so I was like, so I'm just curious. So I stepped on the freaking scale and of course it was higher. And so then I was pissed and sad and upset. And then I tried, I did the, these like mental gymnastics to try to make it okay for me to want to lose weight. Mm. So I went to, you know, it's got to stop at some point. I can't just keep gaining weight. And I've already bought new jeans. I can't buy new jeans again. Like this is a financial decision for me. <laughs> I can't gain weight because of money. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so dumb. So dumb. Because mm. I have a shopping problem anyway. So I'm going to buy the jeans. It's, it doesn't matter. So yeah, I think that's important to think like, okay, these, these periods of time, these instances are a time to stop and think like, what, what is making me feel this way? Mm -hmm. And how can I move forward in a way that feels right for me? So, yeah, I remember, I remember that when you shared it and, um, you also though, in the GTB Academy, I remember when you, like your revelation, I remember there was like a big revelation out of it. And I think it was also celebrating the fact that like, okay, it actually is possible then to feel more comfortable in a body that is bigger. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that was kind of your revelation. And we were all like, oh, fuck. Like, this is proof to me that I can do this. Mm -hmm. um, and then also it's the managing the the downsides of stepping on the scale and seeing the right. number is higher. And right. yeah, I it's funny that you say that because I have so far all of my appointments, I've been I've been like kind of interested to see like my doctor's appointments, where my weight is at. Mm -hmm. And, um, last time I, uh, last, last appointment. So like, I think it was a month ago. Whew, we surpassed <laughs> the biggest number I've ever seen yep. and, you know, had some feels about it. 
Well, this time, shit shot up again. Uh huh. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. But, <laughs> but and and here's the thing. The thing is, is that I knew it was going to be higher. I knew it, and I knew my reaction to last time. So I told the nurse, they they are really great. Um, where I go, and they're like, do you want to know the number? And I go, nope, not today. Yeah. But motherfucker, they had to print out my my. Because I know, like, I could have gone onto my chart and like seen yeah. it regardless, right? But they had to print out my after visit summary today because they had all all of this info about like glucose and all that shit. And smack dab on the front there is my weight, and I just look at Tyler and I was like, "Dude, yeah." Like, and sometimes a freaking graph to like show the increase of your weight. It's like, ugh. Yeah. And the, again, the BMI is still mm -hmm. on there, and I have, you know. I've always been in the overweight category, but I am officially like over 30, which is considered, OB I don't know what the right, you know, quote unquote rankings are for yeah. in pregnancy, but surpassed 30 and just slightly. And, um, I was like, motherfucker, like this is just, <laughs> this is just <laughs> I was trying to avoid this downfall, but you're, and then I had a just a not so positive experience with the midwife who like started talking about like weight loss and I kind of had to shut her up like yeah it was she, I yeah I we could have a whole nother episode I like called my sisters and just vented about some of the stuff she said um and finally I got her to stop talking and it, respectfully and you know sure. respectfully yeah. but so yeah I think I think one thing I always try to think about is like, how was I feeling about things before I stepped on the scale? Like before I found out my weight and like in your case, you were feeling damn good. Like I was feeling damn good. Like I've been moving regularly enough that like, I feel like I'm fulfilled. I've been nourishing my body, but not restricting. I've been managing my stress and like really trying to focus on sleep. So it's like, yeah, it still sucks that that number is where it's at. And habits are still good. Like habits, I feel good about them, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, that shit's hard though. It is it so is. hard to get away from it. It is. Mm -hmm. And not that the numbers don't matter. The numbers definitely don't matter. Right. But I mean, I just wonder how many people can gain the 15 to 25 pounds that you gain with a baby or whatever and not move up into the overweight or obese category. Like, right. unless you're living on the like, nearly underweight or very low end of normal side, I feel like everybody's going to be pushed up into there. So, right. but seeing it and all that on paper and having to have that discussion like that, that sucks that, I mean, you said we could have another episode on this and I totally agree, <laughs> but like not even just educating like people in the healthcare system about how to address those topics, but even just little things like being able to remove the weight from the after visit summary. So people don't have to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or like, can you just take a permanent marker to that shit? Like, right. And I would right. probably be like holding it up to the light. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And honestly, I thought about it as that was like the thing that bothered me the most because yeah, there were several things that she said and I was just like, I'm educated on this stuff and I can work through it. Mm -hmm. But like, what about the, the mom who doesn't even realize she has struggled with disordered eating for most of her life right. and now she is going to potentially like put herself and her baby at risk because like she doesn't think that she can gain more weight she's so afraid of how she's going to lose the weight after like all of these things and i was thinking about it, i was like i'm like randy and i need to go in there and talk to these motherfuckers <laughs> we need to bring a powerpoint and yeah. <laughs> I need a Canva presentation on this, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. So, and again, it, it also though, kind of finding, I guess we can call this like a GTB moment from that experience too. It just reminded me of like, God, I'm so good at my job. <laughs> like, <laughs> it made are. me think like, I know that before you start giving these like blanket recommendations or like blanket, I mean, it felt like advice because she was talking about like what she did. Oh, ask, <laughs> ask your patient, ask your client if they want to hear it. Like, right. I'm not going to just assume that because somebody has gained, you know, 20 pounds or whatever, whether that's in pregnancy or not in pregnancy, that they want to lose the weight. And mm -hmm. I might ask like, 
are you concerned about your weight? And if she had asked me that, I probably would have just been like, nope, you know, it's fine. And then we could have shut that shit down and could have avoided a lot of like the harmful stuff that she said. Right. And again, it just makes me be like, God, Haley, you are just so good at what you do. Like, <laughs> you really are. <laughs> I can attest. Oh my God. And then there's those moments where I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like, I really messed up there, but. No, oh, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, well, it's it's helpful to talk through this. I feel like I hijacked the episode to talk about my oh, heck pregnancy. No. That's it's an important part of your life. I love hearing about it. Yeah, well, you're you're helpful. That that strength of empathy is shining. I see it now that I know <laughs> empathy is your top strength. I'm like, oh hell yeah, it is. Yeah, so but, awesome. yeah. I was not surprised when I when I found that out. Oh my gosh, it, it's Gerald's lowest. <laughs> so. <laughs> I bet that I bet it's Tyler's lowest to it too. I bet his top is like discipline and my yeah. last is probably discipline. I think we have opposites. I think Gerald's top, top is strategic and strategic is my bottom. Absolutely. You and Gerald are a lot like Tyler and I, I think. I think I, I think so. I think I've gathered yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that <laughs> dynamic is no wonder they like get along when they are around each yeah. other. Like that, this they separate sense. from everybody else and just chat to each other. They literally do. Like they <laughs> Oh my God. That's hilarious. That makes sense. Oh, cool. Well, everyone, we want to hear what your highs and lows have been lately. Um we when we submit or feel free to submit your gtb moments on fridays when we post them like on our stories but you can also just message us on instagram um, at give them the bird podcast with how you're feeling about things you know just like the highs what are what gtb moments do you want to celebrate or what kind of lows are you experiencing and um, just know you're not alone even people that like talk on a podcast about this shit do this work every day we're still in the thick of it too. So um, yeah, we're all, we're all in this together. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in to the Give Em the Bird podcast. If you're enjoying the podcast, head on over to Apple iTunes or Spotify and rate, review, and subscribe. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Give Em the Bird podcast to stay up to date with all things GTB. We'll see you back here next week for another episode, but in the meantime, go give them the bird.